Soul Project. Are you here? Yes. Miss Plachette Robinson, let's give her a hand, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Du Bois. So giving honor to God, my Lord Jesus Christ, for the wake up. So glad to be here and thanking my pastor, Pastor Takoy Porter, for allowing us to be here today. This is my home church. I have lived in Sac uh, South Sacramento for 22, 23 years since 2001, and I've been a member of this church. I am here today. My name is Plachette Robertson. I am here representing the Soul Project which is saving our legacy for African-Americans, for smoke-free, safe places. I did come with a team of folks. There are actually five of us that represent the Soul Project. Myself, Valerie Scruggs, which is in the back at our booth, and also Jackie Mendoza, who is our intern from Sacramento State University. Please stand up, Jackie. We have two other folks. Kimberly Bankston Lee and also Twyla Laster. Some of you may know them. So we are, again, so glad to be here in our mission. So what is our mission? We advocate for smoke-free communities in Sacramento and Stockton. Specifically, we are advocating for smoke-free housing and outdoor public spaces. And why are we specifically here today? So quickly to talk about how smoke is smoke tobacco, and nicotine. No matter if you, I know some of you in here may not smoke, but you may have friends, your brother, sister, mother, father, aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends that may smoke vapes, cigarettes, cigarellos, va um, e-cigarettes, weed, and marijuana. Yes, marijuana is smoke. And all smoke, whether you know it or not, is dangerous and bad for your health. And we want you to think about substituting these bad habits or people you know with these bad habits with better and good habits, like exercise, get into sports, singing, music, dancing, something to substitute the smoking. So we are basically here to save black lives. You probably did not know that over 45,000 black people die due to tobacco smoke related to illnesses each year. We want you to be leaders, not followers. So with that said, we have a short video to show you on black lives, black lungs. I've always been led by questions, but sometimes a simple question can lead to big answers. One question in particular has taken me on a nearly 10 year journey. How did menthol cigarettes become the black cigarette? My map of answers formed into a short film, Black Lives, Black Lungs. What started as a question about one product turned into an exploration of how an entire industry in broad daylight and for decades without oversight, wielded its immense power at the cost of black health. As I documented the past, I began to see movement in the present acknowledging the harms of big tobacco. Movement that I thought would right the wrongs of the past. It has been more than a decade since the US banned cigarettes with flavors that helped make them more appealing, especially to kids. But the most popular flavor got a special exemption, and that may be about to change. The FDA's expected plan to ban menthol in cigarettes would be a victory for advocates who note the tobacco industry has targeted the black community with menthols for decades. It's making menthols cheaper in black communities, more price discounts in black communities, uh, strategic partnerships with black-led organizations, the cool jazz festival, really a variety of ways to really focus on transforming menthol into a black cigarette. I finally began to see the industry's power fade, or so I thought. In a blink of an eye, the industry had managed to regain its footing, attract new generations, and protect its future, all with a new product that served as a golden loophole. After decades of successful work by public health to make the harms of traditional tobacco known, a new fight had already begun. 
I started thinking about a whole new set of questions and found myself going back to the past for clues. Now, the puzzle is clear to me. I cannot tell the story of America's first great enterprise, Big Tobacco, without telling the story of colonization, slavery, and capitalism. Thank you so much for your attention. I just want to say how proud I am of all of you who came out as early as 9 a.m. I feel like we've been in children's church. I remember attending Sunday school and also being in the children's choir. So please give yourselves a round of applause again for being here early and all day. We just have two more things. If you can please complete the participant survey, which is on all of the tables, we do need your feedback. We have several questions that are on poster boards in the back room, in this corner and also the corner where the vendor booth is. All you have to do is write your response on a yellow sticky pad and place it on the board anonymously. This will really help us as we plan activities and presentations in the future for use, youth, and each person who does that, you get a red bracelet. We have these bracelets at our vendor booth and we'll give those out to you. Also, stop by our booth to learn more about how we're celebrating 10 years of No Menthol Sunday, where we are working with five churches in the community. Genesis Church is one of those churches and it takes place May 19th. We're doing activities all the way up until May 19th which happens to also be Malcolm X's birthday. So there will be in-person activities and Zoom activities. And I am wrapping up for a pastor who may be saying your time is up. <laughs> so the questions are, you can start approaching the poster boards now. What are your questions about marijuana and tobacco? What would you say to someone to encourage them to quit smoking or vaping. What do you see most about tobacco or marijuana in movies, videos, TV, or social media? And do you or any of your family members smoke or vape tobacco cigarettes or marijuana? If you smoke, how does smoking or va vaping help you? Thank you so much for your attention. Please, please, we need your feedback. Thank you.